Hey, Picture Perfect people, it is Katie with PPLM. We are completely underway at this point with aeration and seating services. So I wanna take this opportunity to talk to you real quick about a very common question and common concern that a lot of people have in regard to the scheduling and performance of their service. And that is how it impacts the results of your seating when you overseed before rain. We're gonna talk about the pros and cons regarding seeding before rainfall as well as where your property may lie on the bell curve of risk. So let's get into this. Two things before we go any further, just be sure real quick to go down and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. And while you're down there, comment and let me know if you've ever had any problems with your seating success where the weather has been concerned. Did a hurricane completely mess it up or did you get a ton of rain and thought that it was shot and then you went outside and you got an amazing stand of baby grass going on? Just let me know what your experience has been. Second thing that I want you to keep in mind is that you have to join us on Thursday, September 12th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel because we are going to be hosting another live event. And this one's actually gonna go right. There's not gonna be anything botched like last time because we're going to be having Matt Martin as our guest star talking about carbon fertility and that carbon-based fertilizer, Carbon X, that everybody has been really excited about this year. We did a cross table interview with Matt at the beginning of the year, so check out that video if you haven't done so already. So this is gonna be kind of a follow up to that, seeing where he is with his Carbon Earth company, as well as learn what he's learned over the course of this year, both from a business perspective, as well as a fertilizer and soil health perspective. So again, that is Thursday, September 12th. When you're done watching this video, be sure to head over to the Grass Factor YouTube channel, subscribe to Matt, check out his videos, just to familiarize yourself with his great personality. He is basically a member of the family at this point. We love Matt. Be sure to check him out and support him and tune in at 9 p.m. on Thursday the 12th. So like with anything in lawn care, there's a really fine line between too much and too little. Whether it's mowing or watering or fertilizer, rain is the same way. You can have too much of it and you can have too little. Earlier this summer, we were definitely experiencing too little, especially when we took into consideration how stupid hot it was getting. Now the temperatures are leveling out and everything is feeling pretty good but we're also heading into hurricane season. And if you remember from last year, we got way too much rain. We had record breaking rains. I think it was like the third wettest year on record, which is 150 years of records. So we want to see some sort of balance between those two extremes. We don't want drought, but we don't want downpours. And guess what, you guys? No one can control it. It's not up to you, it's not up to me, it's not up to Jimmy the big boss at Picture Perfect. Nobody can control what the weather is going to do as much as we would love that power. Yeah, you heard the man. He's saving us for rainy day. So the potential issue of not getting enough rain during the aeration and seeding window is kind of its own issue, and that's gonna be a separate video someday. But for now, I wanna to talk to you about the scenario in which we get really, really heavy rainfall. As anybody who lives in RVA can attest, especially if they were here during 2018's crazy downpours and just daily raining, we see pretty much every type of rain that you can imagine. We've been through every kind of rain there is. Little bit of stinging rain, and big old fat rain. Rain that flew in sideways, and sometimes rain even seemed to come straight up from underneath. It even rained at night. Even right after a seeding, some of this rain can be good. Those nice soft drizzles without a lot of rain and driving winds and water buildup are great. That's basically what your irrigation is doing. So if it's similar in terms of how hard it's hitting the ground and how much it's soaking it to your irrigation output, then it's gonna be a good thing, so long as your irrigation is tuned right. Nice rain happens usually in the morning or early daytime, and it's that nice, quiet, steady drizzle. However, more years than not, we get just as much, if not more, of the bad rain. And this is the downpour rain. This is the rain that lasts for 30 minutes at night, but has a whole two inches coming down during that 30 minute time span. It's thunderstorm rain. 
And so during the summer, this bad rain is most detrimentally associated with fungus. That nighttime heavy rain where the moisture just sits, that's what's causing your brown patch and stuff like that. Erosion is on the list of summertime problems that heavy rain can cause if it's a poorly established lawn with a steep slope or something like that, but it's kind of low on the totem pole in terms of concerns with everything else going on during the summer. If anything, most of us are doing a rain dance during the summer for anything that we can get to break the heat and give our grass a little bit more moisture than it can get just from irrigation. That dancing comes to a fast stop as soon as September hits though, and it becomes aeration and seeding season. And that's because during the summer, the only real problem with any kind of rain is gonna be fungus. And we can do something about fungus. We expect it and it is what it is, but during the fall, there's a lot more that can be put at risk by rain. So if you remember from our aftercare video, fescue takes about a week to germinate at least, and then it can take a month or more to really develop successfully to the point where it's able to hold itself in place and withstand things like mowing and foot traffic. This first month, but especially that first week, is when fescue seed is most at risk of negative consequences associated with hurricane season and heavy downpour rains. However, and this is the important thing to keep in mind and where that bell curve of risk comes into play that I was telling you guys about, the degree of risk to your seeding success that is posed by heavy rains doesn't just depend on how much rain is falling within how much amount of time, it also depends on the quality of your lawn starting out. This is really important to remember and understand because I don't want you guys to think that just because there's a hurricane about to come through or just because it rained a few days after your seed was put down that everything was jeopardized and no baby grass is going to come up. That's not the case, that's not true, that's a misunderstanding. There is a special situation in which that's more likely to happen but even then it may not. So let me get into that a little bit further. Areas of the lawn that are starting out as thin or bare, and especially ones that are on a slope, are at much greater risk of there being any kind of disturbance in the lay of the seed because there isn't that adult turf holding that seed into place. This is why, if you remember from our liquid aeration video, there is still a good reason for core aeration on properties that are considering liquid but haven't had that established lawn yet. Core aeration does a great job of giving a supplementary foothold to that baby grass that an adult turf setup would otherwise be doing. So the two biggest risk factors outside of how much rain you're getting in general is how thin or bare your lawn is starting out and how much of a slope you have to your lawn in general. Now keep this in mind too, if seed is disturbed as a result of heavy rainfall, it doesn't mean that you've lost all of that seed. If anything, it's just gotten relocated. Think of it this way, when enough rain falls that it's not able to soak into the ground quickly enough, that's when you get runoff. You get puddles and that water pooling above the earth's surface. And that's where your seed is sitting. That's where it's going to be doing its rooting thing and all of that. So as soon as that water starts to rise on the soil surface, seed floats, so it's gonna go with it. It's not disappearing. It's not immediately running 100 yards down the road. It's just floating on top. And like a boat, it's gonna shift and it's gonna go to a different part of the yard, especially if it's just a little pocket of a bare area, it's probably just gonna drift to where that adult grass is going to catch it. The problem here is that it leads to irregular growth patterns. So where the seed got moved away from, that bare area that was at risk, that's where you're going to have another bare area or a thin spot next season. However, if it shifts you know, five feet to the side where your adult turf starts again and it gets caught, all of a sudden you've got a lot of seed mounded up in that one spot and you're going to have really over thick growth the following spring. This usually is going to smother itself out grass does not like to be seeded too heavily. That's why you don't over overseed. You don't want it to be so thick that it outcompetes with itself. But again, your seed didn't get lost, it just got moved. So that's something to keep in mind about how that weather is going to impact your seeding service. So what can be done about it, right? That's why we're watching this video, isn't it? We want to know what we can do. What can we do to fix it? I'm a fixer, I get it. The best thing that a homeowner can do to reduce the risk of a negative impact from heavy rain on their seeding success is to understand their property. Find out and understand where you are on that bell curve of risk. Do you have a well-established, relatively flat lawn? 
you basically have no risk. Do you have a sloped lawn or one with thin or bare spots that are at risk? Well, okay, we need to pay more attention to the weather. Understanding the risks as they are associated with your unique lawn gives you that perspective to know whether or not something is worth making adjustments for. Now, this is where a lot of people ask me about what our guarantee is on our seating service where the weather is concerned. Let me tell you what I can guarantee. I can guarantee you that we are using some of the highest quality seed on the market. We are using seed that is 100% clean of any weed seed. We are using a seed that has a guaranteed germination of at least 90% if it is cared for correctly. We are using fescue seed harvested this year that is triple blended to ensure quality growth. And I can guarantee that we are putting it down at an ideal application rate for the maximum amount of healthy growth but I can't guarantee the weather. I do everything that I can with every client for Picture Perfect to talk to you about the risks associated for your specific lawn like we are doing in this video. And I do everything that I can to open the opportunity to every homeowner to make the final decision about whether or not their service is going to be performed on the day that it's originally scheduled. We contact all of our clients a week ahead of service as well as a day ahead to give plenty of notice. And if there's a situation where we've come to the conclusion that it's a high risk lawn, and trust me, I have multiple situations like this where it's a client that I care about, they've got a lawn that is completely bare and on a significant slope, they are high risk and I don't want them to lose out on that investment. So during those call aheads, I'm looking at the weather and I'm asking them to look at the weather too. And we're talking about whether or not based on the time of the year they want us to just go ahead and do that service or if based on the forecast they're more comfortable holding off now keep in mind based on the way that our scheduling has to operate if you're scheduled for example on September 28th and there's a hurricane possibly brewing out in the Atlantic and you decide to hold off on that service I can't guarantee that you're going to be scheduled for two weeks later it may be another month until we're closer to that area again before we're able to reschedule that service so it's something to keep in mind but it's not something to panic about like I said the vast majority of lawns especially ones that are established are not a high risk for any kind of disturbance of the seed even with hurricanes and remember last year we got like three hurricanes back to back to back we still see a very very low rate of seed compromise but if it's something that you have concerns about or if it's something that you have questions about I greatly encourage you to reach out to our office to discuss the best plan for your lawn so like I said before, be sure to go comment below and let me know if you've ever had an issue with your lawn where the rain has been concerned. And also just let me know how your aeration seeding season is going, whether you're professional and you're underway like we are or you're a homeowner that does it yourself and you've already done it or you're about to, let me know where you are in that progress. Aeration seeding is super exciting. It's all downhill from here through the spring. Lawns are gonna be looking amazing. I don't even wanna think about summer anymore. We're so close to fall just in general so comment below and let me know what's going on in your lawn as always I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch with me if you have questions give me a shout otherwise I hope that you have a picture-perfect day